everyone, my name is Cora and today I am going to be sharing with you 20 fashion related video ideas that aren't hauls, unboxings or other shopping related content. It's been really hard for me to find content within the kawaii fashion community on YouTube lately that I want to enjoy because it's just so oversaturated with hauls, unboxings. However, I do not want to be another video that talks about why haul videos are problematic and why you shouldn't make them. We need to provide adequate alternatives to people who like to create these haul videos because there are some very compelling reasons as to why uh, influencers like to make haul videos. First of all, I'll just briefly summarize why people have such a problem with hauls and unboxings, and that's because they tend to glorify overconsumption of usually very cheap, unethical, unsustainable, problematic clothing and brands, and with very little intention to use those products to their fullest extent. But like I said, there are some very compelling reasons as to why people are constantly pushing out these haul videos, these unboxing videos, and I wanted to get into them because I think it's really important to keep these points in mind when we are discussing our alternative video ideas. So the first reason is Haul videos and unboxings are very easy to create and pump out in a very short amount of time. If you're trying to upload regularly, like the YouTube algorithm likes, if you're trying to build a following and keep your fans interested, then haul videos are going to be very attractive to you for that reason. They're a very repeatable video format, something like a style evolution video. It's something you can only really make once. You're gonna ha have to wait for your style to actually evolve more to a point where you can justify making another style evolution video. Whereas with haul videos, you can just keep making them. As long as you have new stuff to show off, then you can make a haul video. Another point that I think is very attractive to people is that they ride on the coattails of trends and popular brands. Like, even though Dolls Kill is super duper duper problematic, Haul videos from Dolls Kill, they rake in the views. There are people who are searching up those popular brands like Dolls Kill, Uvimi, Unzi, Lazy Oaf. You, you'd want your videos to show up in popular search results because then you get more views. Or you'd want your videos to be recommended against very similar videos. They're quite casual. It feels like your friend is showing you some purchases that they got recently that they're excited about. Whole videos do help people decide what they want to buy. They're very good for like telling an audience a first impression of a product. However, they're not very good for figuring out the longevity of a product. So with those five points in mind, I have come up with 20 easy video ideas that fit either most or all of those points. So the first thing on my list would be to review an item that you've actually owned for a while, preferably from a brand that's still in business. So let's say you have an item that you really like or has kind of disappointed you in terms of quality you've had it for maybe a year or two years and you can do a video reviewing that item and how it has lasted you and served you during the extended period of time in which you have owned it and that would be incredibly helpful and informative for a lot of people. Number two, and this is something that I think is definitely quite trend 
relevant or at least it can be very trend setting is to start or participate in some kind of wardrobe tag or maybe even an outfit tag. A tag is pretty much where you're asked a few questions or asked to show an item that fits a particular prompt or something. There was the Fairy K tag that was being passed around a few years back and the reason why it's called the tag is because not only are you tagging these items that happen to fit questions like what would be the item you'd take with you if your house was burning down. At the end you're supposed to tag maybe a few other people to also do the tag. I think that would be something that's really interesting and it really helps foster a community and if you start to tag everyone's going to be naming you as the person who started the tag. If you get tagged then the viewers of like the person who tagged you might go over and check out your content to see when you post the tag and your video is going to get recommended against other people who do the tag. Like we really just need to bring back tags, okay? The next idea is to share some clothing love stories. So this is a concept that was started by Fashion Revolution. They wanted to counteract these haul videos and this excessive consumption with clothing love stories where you take an item of clothing that you wear a lot and really love and have had for a long time that maybe has some kind of interesting story or memories attached to it and you pretty much talk about that and you share that clothing love story. They could be sort of like casual and low effort or they could be something a bit more produced but I I think it definitely has some repeatable potential because you could feature one or two or three items in each video and you can sort of like do multiple like that. Number four! It pretty much checks every single box that makes haul videos so desirable because it takes the format of haul videos and then it subverses them. These are anti-hauls, unhauls and alternatives. An anti-haul is where you talk about the things that you won't be buying because you think that they're too wasteful or they're not very practical or you don't agree with like the ethics or sustainability or whatever behind the item. Like it's a great way to call out greenwashing and problematic brands and stuff but it's pretty much a way to I guess get people to be more critical of what they buy and be more critical of trendy products and so there you had that trend appeal and anti hauls are also basically as repeatable as a haul video probably even more so because they cost like nothing aside from your basic camera equipment like I'm just filming this on my phone with like a mini tripod I was able to create an anti-haul with that that was actually uh, quite popular, at least by my personal standards. So unhauls are something I haven't seen in fashion, but I have seen them in booktube from like years back. I don't know if they're still a thing. We've seen a lot of decluttering videos lately, but those are sort of one of those not very repeatable fashion video ideas. However, I'm sure that throughout the year or over a period of time we all come across like maybe a few items that we want to declutter but we don't necessarily get rid of a whole bunch at once. Maybe if you happen to find a handful of items that you want to declutter you can do a video talking about why you're getting rid of it and what about it maybe disappointed you or what you've learned from having it and deciding you didn't want it. And then alternatives are like a way to refresh your wardrobe in some way without buying anything new. Just sharing some clothing pieces that you really like which sort of aligns with the clothing love stories which is like a subcategory of the whole alternative according to Fashion Revolution. Or it could be you've recently done multiple DIYs and you can just show them off in the video and say this is what I've DIY'd recently, this is how I like to wear it. Or it could be like you do a clothing swap with someone. This idea is 
super duper casual. It's to sort of just ch sit down, chat about life while repairing an old item of clothing or maybe if you have a battle jacket, battle vest or something, you can just like casually sew on a patch while talking about like some kind of topic, be it life, a Q&A, some kind of relevant topic so you have that trend appeal but it's also very casual and very repeatable and I don't think it suits everyone because I tried it and it didn't end up suiting me but I think it could work for other people. I had the problem of just like constantly hunching over my hand sewing project. Number six is to list your favorite fashion inspirations and then maybe show some outfits that you put together inspired by them. You can just do like one general video about your fashion inspirations and it's also an opportunity for you to maybe talk about like fairly popular topics within a little niche. However, it's not the most repeatable idea if you're just literally doing it all in one video. So you could beef it up a little bit by maybe talking specifically about like a handful of your inspirations in one video instead of all of them and you can maybe like talk, show or put together some outfits inspired by those particular inspirations like I'd love to put together a video in which I style outfits inspired by pixie locks, synth pop circus, cyber girl and you may not have heard of them, but loopy style. Next is to review and maybe recreate some of your old outfits. So you could just do a plain old style evolution video. I may have mentioned this before, but the problem with style evolution videos is if you want to make another one, you've kind of got to wait until your style has evolved. And that could take years. So yeah, not the most repeatable idea but if you're maybe just reviewing a handful of your old outfits in each video you can talk about how you would improve them either by putting together the outfits in real life and filming them or even just like doing a little photoshop thing you could also eventually expand it to reviewing your viewers submitted outfits but you know it depends on what works for you i just thought it would be something interesting to bring up and we'll move on to the next point now show off your most worn items and or your most repeated outfits because we do not indulge in the idea that repeating an outfit or an item is a big fashion faux pas. No sir, because I just... It, when you actually think about it though, it makes no sense and it really is just a capitalist lie sold to us to sell us more clothing that we don't need, that we will end up throwing away. So yeah, not being allowed to repeat outfits is totally a conspiracy theory created by capitalism. This is a standard that was basically created because we never see celebrities repeating outfits and when they do the media slams them because how dare someone wear the same jeweled bedazzled dress twice? That thing was so expensive. You can't wear that twice. off track here and getting very heated. I honestly think that if you are an outfit repeater, there is no shame in that. In fact, there is a lot of pride in that because you have managed to create these outfits that you love so much that you just want to keep re-wearing them and showing them to the world. Because I really don't think that just because you've worn an outfit before or, or you've posted it on social media, that means that it's dead. We do not kill our outfits. And so if you make a video talking about 
like your most worn items and your most worn outfits. That would just be so cool because you can talk about why this outfit works for you really well. You can talk about why you love it so much and it can also help to destigmatize outfit repeating. And you can even talk a little bit about how you like to vary it from time to time. And the great thing about this is because I think it has some great repeatability. I think that for like each season you could like do my most worn outfits of spring 2020. I think it would be really refreshing. I mean, you've seen me wear the top half of this outfit on my Instagram before, and here I am proudly wearing it again. It's very flashy, it's very recognizable, and I love it, so I'm gonna keep on wearing it. <laughs> Next one, and I think this one would be very, very fascinating to see everyone do. It is to sort through your wardrobe and sort of like do a split of each side. This is similar to what Pixie Locks said she started doing in her video where she said she was giving up fast fashion or she had given up fast fashion for real and she had split her wardrobe into the sustainable, ethical, small business side and the fast fashion side. It, it's sort of a way for her to be transparent as an influencer in that regard. But I think it's possible to take it a step further by actually showing that process of sorting through and I guess discovering what exactly your wardrobe is composed of. Like you can sort it so that you have natural fibers on one side, unnatural fibers on the other side, ethical on one side, non-ethical on the other side, sustainable on one side, non-sustainable on the other side, handmade on this side, non-handmade on that side, small business, big business, worn, unworn, cheap, expensive, stuff like that. And it's almost like a way to collect data on your own wardrobe and you can give a little bit of a commentary and you might surprise yourself or something. That's something I really want to do. I don't think it is the most repeatable idea, but I think it is something that is really fascinating. And I'd love to see it become a trend. I'd love to see a bunch of people making videos like that. And you can bet I'll be making a video like that in future as well. If you're into makeup, then why not do a video talking about the products that you have completely used up? I don't remember the name of this beauty YouTuber, but she had this series called The Empties where she would show the products that she had completely used up. And when you think about it, the best possible endorsement of a product is when it has been completely used up by someone. Like, if it's just a first impressions video, then you have no idea how much they're actually going to use it. But if it's a product that someone has loved so much that they've managed to use it all up, that would be a great thing to talk about and a great way for your audience to figure out what the best products are. Talk about the stuff you wish you knew before you got into alternative fashion. Because I think all of us have those uh, moments where there are some things we wish we knew before we got started um, and that is like knowledge that we can pass on to new people who are entering the fashion and I definitely think it has popularity potential because while I haven't done a video on it I have written a blog post and it was my third ever blog post when I barely had a following no one really cared who I was. It is still my most viewed blog post today. Hey Jiggums! Hey JP! Oh you're so cute and you've got such a short belly! Aww. It isn't the most repeatable idea, but it is something that would resonate with people. I think it could potentially become a series, like maybe after you ran out of your own advice to give, you can ask your followers what's something you wish you knew before you got into alternative fashion. I just think it would be super interesting and super helpful and useful. I like this one. Talk about the non-trendy things you love to wear because ultimately trends are just a suggestion. 
And it is so important that we remember that. And it's also important that we realize that we think before participating in a trend, I think it's a great idea because it helps destigmatize the idea of being out of trend. And honestly, there are some items where I'm like, wait, what do you mean that's not something people just wear all the time? What do you mean that's only something people wear when it's trendy? Sometimes dressing outside the trends is a great way to develop your own personal style and we all know that trends like to recycle themselves and come back and oh he's a little he's a little bread roll you're a little bread roll let's destigmatize it together let's remember that trends are only a suggestion and that it is perfectly acceptable to ignore those suggestions this one might require a bit of guts but I also think it could be really fascinating and that is to talk about how politics inform your personal style because fashion is inherently political even if you don't think your personal style is political trust me it is in some way <laughs> for example we're seeing a lot more androgyny and like breaking gender norms in fashion because of the LGBTQIA plus community becoming more visible. Same thing with rainbows becoming more trendy as well. I want to make a video talking about why I dress this way because of my autism and why I dress this way because of my asexuality. It isn't the most repeatable idea but it is something that can be very relatable and resonating and powerful and I highly recommend it. You may be putting yourself at risk of being targeted by uh, bigots on the internet. However, you are also potentially going to inspire someone else out there who might be like you. If you have the courage to make that kind of video, go for it. Another idea is to tell us your fashion tips, tricks and hacks, or at least test out some fashion tips, tricks and hacks. Maybe your viewers could send in stuff that works for them. Maybe you can just talk about some hacks that you've heard of from other people that happen to work for you. For example, I like to plan my outfits the night before because it can be a bit too much of a mental strain to figure it out in the morning and I want to be able to save my ability to make decisions for more important stuff throughout the day. So that's something that works for me but you might want to give tips on like how to keep your socks up. I'm sure you have some tips out there that could be useful or I'm sure you can find some tips that would be interesting to try out. This is probably one of my favourite points on this list but you know how we all have those moments where we're sort of just in our room toying around with clothes seeing like different ways we can wear something maybe putting on and taking off accessories trying yeah just sort of playing around with what we have without any intention of necessarily creating a final outfit. I think that would be really fascinating to film and share online and this was inspired by a best dressed video. Ashley was just trying to figure out what she was gonna wear on a date and she was trying on all of this stuff and she wasn't sure. Provided that like you feel comfortable doing it and it's safe for work because you know there is the chance of like showing your undergarments and YouTube doesn't like that. This next idea might be better and this is probably my favorite one on the list which is styling vlogs. Like just videos that walk you through someone's styling process. This is mostly inspired by Alexa Poletti and her style walkthroughs. I never like to name names in anything but I do feel like she supports a lot of problematic brands but I still love her style walkthroughs for some reason. Like I'm not subscribed but periodically I just check her channel to see do you have a new style walkthrough. I just want one. I want to see the process of putting together outfits because it fascinates me so much and that's why I put a few um, styling vlogs on my channel as well. So they could be like the ones I've posted. I'm just styling a, an outfit for a particular event. 
it could be a new item it could be an old item that you just don't wear much or only wear a certain way and you challenge yourself to come up with three different outfits to wear that item with and you just sort of show the process of picking out the clothing you're gonna wear with it picking out the shoes and accessories doing like this cute nice flat lay give me more styling content please just show me your process next suggestion we are almost at the end we're at number 17 list some suggestions for the fashion industry the fashion industry has a lot of problems it's unethical it's unsustainable. It has a lot of inclusivity issues as well. So maybe you're someone who's plus size and you want to provide a few suggestions on how brands can better cater to the needs of plus size people. Maybe you're a person of color and you can provide suggestions that way. Maybe you're non-binary or trans or have like a specific kind of gender expression or maybe you're chronically ill or disabled in some way or maybe you're just like me and you just want to tell the fashion industry how they can stop greenwashing and again i think this is something that is very repeatable and once you run out of ideas yourself you can ask your viewers for suggestions and include them in a video I just think it's a really interesting idea and I think it's a great way to provide feedback and I also think that maybe for small business owners who are looking to make their products more marketable or appealing, they might come across your video and think, oh, huh, I might try that. This next one is to take inventory of your wardrobe. Pretty much I think we've all had those moments where we feel like something is missing from our wardrobe to make it complete. We all change in some way within a six month or year long period. You know, we have different seasons. You might be approaching winter and you just wanna make sure you understand what you feel is missing or you have too much of in your wardrobe so you can better prepare for that. Show some of your favorite pages from like old magazines or maybe even new magazines that you find quite inspiring. You could even like do a video dedicated to each magazine that you own if you happen to own multiple. You could even maybe borrow some from the library if you don't want to worry about buying new magazines. And that I guess is supposed to be a way to sort of revive that feeling of being young Harajuku fashion kids flicking through like fruits magazine with your friends and you can even bring in a friend and you can look through it together and it would be like a fun hangout time and finally share some of your favorite fashion quotes you could even get just one quote that you use as like a prompt for some kind of discussion like for example i recently found a quote that really affected me personally which was by i believe Stella Rose and she said I want people to think of personal style as self-care and I feel like it just really made a lot of things and a lot of conflict I was feeling in my head just click. I, I kind of want to do a video or at least a blog post maybe both talking about why personal style is an important form of self-care for me and why it's i guess different from retail therapy i hope you enjoyed this video if you happen to know or watch or enjoy a youtuber who you feel is doing too many haul videos definitely send them this video because maybe all they need is something to spark their inspiration i really want to help normalize some of these ideas and make whole videos not be as prominent in the kawaii community because there are so many other ideas out there and i will see you in my next video